Well, welcome to Contemporary Ando's sixth podcast, uh, Under Prepared. Um, Luca, let's get straight to it. Why don't you recap what we did last time and plan for today? Yeah, we, we talked about clinical workflow, and I think this is the second part of that lovely case that we started off last week. Uh, we talked about uh, um, restorability assessment, uh, taking restorations out, cusps down, protecting teeth, preparing for the final restoration. Uh, we talked about the preparation of the tooth and um, and, and the overall uh, prognosis. So I think the next bit that's really important we should touch on is the irrigation, obturation, and then the final cleaning up and uh, restorative material that we're going to choose. And I think uh, let's get straight into it and see how the clinical workflow uh, is today. As a recap, as we said, we, we removed the restoration. This is your case, John. We removed the restoration. <clears throat> we had to check that those cracks didn't go too far down, take, took the cusps down, <clears throat> prepared the tooth. And in this case, we used uh, trinatomy. Um, yep. And I think this introduces us to the next phase, which is the irrigation. Uh, John, you know, tell me, what, what's that tip there on the slide? So what we've got here, we've got uh, obviously got the, the true anatomy prime, which is what we use to finish off the shaping here. And as you quite rightly say, irrigation, that final flush, disrupting and busting the bi biofilm, that, that irrigation side of things is really, really critical. Uh, it's how we are going to try and achieve success here. And what we can see, this is the uh, Iriflex or the True Anatomy Irrigation Needle. And uh, it's, a, it's a lovely little tip, isn't it? To use, very, very flexible, uh, gets down the canal. But before we get into the nuances of that, why don't we have a look at, you know, kind of more traditional things that we can use to, to clean and uh, irrigate the root canals with. And, you know, why don't you chat through the slide here, Luca? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the Irreflex or Trinatomy needle is a new uh, new product in the plastics, but we have our metal needles uh, and we still use them. Um, I think uh, both you and I use these in, in clinic uh, regularly. There's different shapes and sizes. Now, uh, the one that you see are close, um, they're open-ended, so where the fluid just shoots out straight at the end. You have a um, side cut, which is the slightly arrow pointing one where the, the fluid goes to the, to the end and sideways. Uh, you've got the side vented. The one that we really like is the close-ended side vented, yeah. which means that, that the fluid doesn't go shoot straight through, but it goes sideways. So even if you wedge it into the canal, which you, you shouldn't, because there's always a bit of movement of the needle, um, it, it shoots fluid sideways rather than, than apically reducing a chance of extruding um, the, the irrigant through the, the, the apex. And what, what size do you, do you normally use, John? I, I think I've got the same. Yeah, we, we use a 30 gauge. So, um, you know, typically that's been something like the Pro Rinse, Dental Plus Rona's Pro Rinse we've used. Um, it's really simple and very safe, as you say, and it, it is the thing that we advocate and teach most general dentists. But, you know, mm. as with as with time, things evolve, new products come to market. Uh, and if we look at this in a little bit more detail, this is the uh, Iriflex, which is uh, from Prodoui Dentaire or the True Anatomy Irrigation Needle, which we can see on the right of the screen. Um, again, it's very, very small. So 0.3 mils at the apex, 4% taper, and it's super flexible. So where it's quite useful, uh, I, I find it, I don't know about you, Luca, is, is going around curvatures or, or working in slightly longer, more complex mm. canals. Mm. Absolutely. Um, so, it's, yeah. it, it's a good good concept, but what, what what have you noticed with it? What would you say, if you had to redesign it, what would be your your feedback? So for me, the the angulation, if, particularly if we look at the um, the Dentsply Serona logoed um, tree anatomy irrigation needle there, for me, the angulation isn't ideal for the type of... Um, access cavities we do. So our access cavities, as you've probably seen, are a little bit more dynamic. Uh, by that, I mean, we use the tooth structure that's there, basically. So if we've got a DO restoration, we're going to remove the DO and, and leverage our access from the wrong side almost sometimes, don't we? So putting the curvature mm. on this plastic is a bit harder than perhaps putting the um, mm. curvature on a metal base needle, but still, nonetheless, it's very good, but you've got to use with caution. That's what we would say. Yeah. Um, it does create a little bit of positive uh, pressure moving forwards and the funnel shape creates a bit of hydraulic action, a bit of piston effect. So we always say the, the irrigation, uh, the irrigant even should uh, should be extruded as you're removing mm. the uh, syringe tip from the yeah. canal, basically. So that's something you would echo as well, Luca? 
Hundred percent. I think I've I've had a little bit more sensitivity uh, during irrigation with this, and it's because it's actually so good uh, with small shapes. Uh, this is the irrigate the needle that allows you to get as close as possible to the apex, uh, but it's so good that because it fits the shape so well. So it's that piston effect that you've created. So um, just need to adapt the technique a little bit. So instead of uh, pressing the plunger as you go down, I would probably insert it and press the plungers and coming out and just gentle the, the pumping that you do with the needle has to be a little bit more gentle um otherwise you do get that slight reaction which is probably a bit of a extrusion of the irrigant but you know it's it's a forward uh step compared to what yeah. we had before so let, let's see let's see what ne comes next really um yeah. and what what, you, what irrigants do you use throughout back to ask you the same question it's almost uh, it's almost <laughs> like we spent too long together um yeah for, for me it's hypo throughout always um 5.25 percent is typically what what we yeah. would use we are more than happy anywhere between two and 5.25 as we know the evidence yeah. is pretty equivocal on it so there's no one is better than yeah. the other but we like to use a stronger hypo um yeah and then we always just back it up penultimate rinses edta solution so that's 17 percent you mm -hmm. could use citric acid mm -hmm. if that's what your your preference is and then final flash yeah. hypo um, yeah. And as we talked, I think it might have been in our second or third podcast, there's always activation involved. Mm -hmm. So just fluid movement, Absolutely. that's it. It doesn't matter what you use, just a bit of movement. Something will, will yeah. do the job. And and it just <laughs> gets that canal as clean as possible so we can we can then kind of sort of set the scene for, for this bit, which is um, starting mm -hmm. to operate. And this is us placing sealer. So what tip are we using here? So this is a slight modification. Um, I think uh, this is a. Uh, I, I, I guess we can. You, you can claim that you've invented this, uh, John. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, we we can use different tips to to apply a sealer in. We like to put the sealer inside an acidose tip, a uh, very very small gauge, which means that you can put it almost halfway down the canal, and you apply the cement within the the canals, and then place the GP uh, into them. The advantage of this is that you can place a little bit more <coughs> sealer within these canals without it going everywhere and stopping you from seeing where you are. Um, it also has a finer tip to some of the other ones that come um, with with the systems, with different uh, sealer systems. Uh, it's also a little bit more economical in, in practice. So I think we really like that Akidos, that it, it gives you the flexibility of using these small tips to apply the sealer within the canal. We like to use sealers that flow, so they have uh, a low viscosity, uh, so they work well in film thick in, in a very in a thin film thickness. Yeah. Um, the one that that we prefer uh, is epoxy resin based sealers. Um, we could, I think, we can do a whole other episode <laughs> on sealers for sure <laughs> and more. Uh, but th this is what we we teach, and I think we've uh, we've been accustomed to we've got a good uh, backing on it so at the moment we are just uh, for our daily workflow is epoxy resin based sealer in that case you saw it was ah plus um or, or also the equivalent could be two seal as well um yeah. the, the, that's what we use to apply it and we also apply a little bit of the sealer on the gp uh, we usually recommend you use the gp that matches uh, the system you've used, uh, in particular, the newer systems such as Trinatomy or the Protaper Golds or or the Reciproc uh, systems, the newer ones, have very, very well made and measured GP. Um, I, the, the manufacturers have an error that they are uh, granted, uh, but the newer GP, uh, the Conform Fit in particular, is not just the way it's measured and made. Well, it's, it's measured differently. Uh, it's made differently. It's also a different composition. So it's different phases of GP, which means it's a little bit softer, which means you don't need as much heat to melt it. You don't want to heat things too much. It also means that um, it's a little bit more bendy but resistant. Um, and if you look at that picture on the, on the slide, uh, the, the GP, you can see that the, the neck of the GP is, is still quite thin. If you look back at the old Protepa necks or the old Protepa Universal's GPs, they used to be quite thick there, and that's where they used to get caught. So the newer GP series, uh, especially the conform fit ones, are made differently. They're a little bit finer there. They just flow really, really well. Um, and you don't have to use as much heat because heat will denature the sealer that you use. So just always be careful 
how you put the sealer because uh, um, depending on what sealer you use, it affects uh, how the technique. Um, we like to keep things simple, so we use um, epoxy resin based sealer and we use our well fitting conform fit. In this case, John is using the Trinatomy ones again, they're color coded. We're simple people, we like every help we can get <laughs> yellow for small, red for prime. Well, John does at least yellow for small, red for prime, and then green is, is the medium ones. And then a little bit of heat. What you just saw there was the heat tip of the system B uh, type of uh, kit. A uh, little burst of heat. Again, we don't want to put too much heat to denature the the, resin, the, um, the epoxy resin raised uh, sealer, um, and just clearing up the the orifice uh, part of the GP of the canal and packing it with a cold plugger. Uh, we always like to finish below the orifice with the GP. Um, and I think this sort of leads us on to the next aspect of the treatment of the workflow, which is the, the final restoration. Um, yeah, so sort of the, the, the clean the clean up job, base, isn't yeah. it? Exactly. So yeah. It's uh, as you could, I, I know what you're going to say because normally it's an absolute bomb site in there after you've used epoxy <laughs> resin. So it's kind of we've been. This is this is your tip, isn't it, Luke? Uh, not literally, yeah. but uh, metaphorically, the Dento <laughs> infuser is uh, the little fluffy tip that we. Um, we use and, and there's uh, isopropyl alcohol uh, in that mm -hmm. and that allows us then just to really clean everything up and then in the usual fashion here we're doing a total etch technique so again mm -hmm. we we often do that if you had the opportunity to use air abrasion then brilliant it cleans it up an absolute treat but the total etch uh, leaves the opportunity to clear a, clear away any of those sort of unwanted little bits of sealer mm -hmm. that can be left behind and um, yeah, it's been a really nice little addition uh, to our repertoire there. Yeah. Um, then we need to come on to the actual restoration. And, and we're using SDR here, which is smart dentine replacement, which is a low viscosity bulk fill. Really mm -hmm. simple thing to check first. Does the tip go where it needs to? Okay, again, often this is really overlooked because if you can't get the tip there, you can have a massive void there. So just mm -hmm. make your life easy. Pick the tip that fits. If the tip doesn't go there, then we're going to be using something like the Accudose that you saw um, uh, from Centrix Dental uh, that you saw us placing the, the sealer with. So just these little things that we've kind of worked out as we've well, probably messed up quite a few endos <laughs> over the year, really. But uh, that's mm -hmm. it. And then, and then we come to the restoration. So we're obviously under the scope here. So we've got the filter on. And um, we do the initial... A bit with SDR. So this literally, as you can see on the graphic, is it's just a covering initially of the GP and the base of the chamber. Okay, a re reasonably sort of thin-ish uh, section to it, and then we cure that, and we just let that sort of let that develop. So you're trying to protect the bond a little bit if you can, trying to prevent as much of that kind of pull away. Which, if you do do a big bulk fill, I think you are going to pull away from the bond at the base. So we. Mm -hmm. We use this quite a lot, and you'll see here again over the dentine, you're just going to see the very, very fine uh, kind of thin film of SDR that we're going to place there. Again, it's to try, try and protect the bond that's there, minimize the amount of pull off from the, the composite. And as I said, dual cures can work a treat in this if you just let them chemically set as well. So this is all sped up. So clearly, in this is a 20 second cure in the practice. Uh, and then what you're going to see now, Luca, is what I describe as the endodontist's uh, composite build-up. So this is going to be in one hit. So we've got full cusp reduction here. Um, mm -hmm. I, I do use an instrument, not my thumb, which is a step out from your, <laughs> from your composite dentistry. Um, but we've got to understand, this is going off for um, an indirect restoration, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, and I think uh, the, our previous podcast covers why we do this. Um, and we, we're very, uh, we, we repeated a lot on our courses is restoration out, cusps down, restoration out, cusps down. You need to protect the tooth. It's going to go off for a restoration, in this case, an onlay. Um, so it doesn't need to be fantastic. Um, we work in, in, in a real life clinic, which means that uh, patients, as much as they enjoy our company, they don't want to spend <laughs> four hours in the chair. Um, we tend to do start to finish uh, endo. Um, so our appointments are, are two hour appointments at, at best. 
which means that things need to move along. Uh, so we need to keep it realistic. And uh, and um, that's why I'm afraid I don't even use GP for tints. Um, so it's just a functional <laughs> functional composite, functional coverage. And then we have a good relationship with our referral dentists. So they, they get the, the customer coverage done uh, relatively quickly to, to protect yeah. the tooth. In this case, uh, is a tooth that has a bit of a crack uh, in the crown. So you want them to get uh, an odd layer of crown ASAP. Um, so we, we, we're doing a workflow that reflects our daily daily routine, a workflow that we think uh, can be uh, exported to any practitioner, whether you are generalist, specialist, or enhanced uh, uh, skills, absolutely. Uh, we, we try and keep it as, as realistic as possible. Yeah, for sure. And then we, we end up with this. This is the, the sort of final result and in inverted mm -hmm. commas, the look that is created. So we know in this this tooth, we've got MB1, MB2, uh, and you can see that as a slight sort of bulging in the uh, coronal third of the mesia buccal. You've got some some cool curvatures here. I mean, I love the dista buccal. Mm. It, doesn't look, it doesn't look that remarkable at first glance, but it's got a subtle S curve to it. And you just see how the true anatomy just handles, maintains, respects the geometry. It's dealt with that little mm -hmm. hook on the palatal. Um, we've maintained some of that body of the uh, the tooth yeah. in the, the access cavity region. So, I, you know, from my side, I like it. And um, it, it's preserved tooth, which perhaps, you know, with more classical systems, if you think about, um, you know, you, let's go old school, let's go K3 or fixed taper mm. systems, original night eye, even the pro taper golds, even pro taper ultimate, something like that is going to create a bigger, bigger footprint on this tooth. Than, and quite frankly, you don't need to, I don't think so. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a nice looking result for me, but we've, we've kind of had to retrain our eye on this, haven't we, over the last it's couple different. of years or so? It just looks yeah. different. Uh, and we have to understand that we're still uh, fulfilling all the biological objectives uh, of cleaning, shaping, obturating. Um, uh, we have a few of what you define legacy concepts where you have to have a big prep to have a lot of GP because my big instrument has to get to two thirds of down the canal. Um, we have better sealers, we have better instruments, we have better magnification. So we almost have to adapt our eye because our technology and our instrumentation has changed. So things will not look the same as they did uh, 20, 30 years ago. Uh, but it's a process. And I think it's a process we're all going through at the moment. But it's an interesting one. Really, really interesting to see how it's it's shifting. Yeah, totally agree. So I, I think that wraps up quite nicely. That that little summary there is great. So let's um, let's call this a day today, Luca. Thank you for... Uh, we're, we're, so I know we're, we're separated today, but uh, it's been... Barely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, barely a K file between us, but never mind. Exactly. Anyway. Uh, uh, always lovely. Thank you very much for the KISS discussion. Till the next one. Cheers. Thanks, Luca. Bye. Thank now. you, guys. Bye bye. <laughs>